I have a few things that I wanted to do and must do, and then there was this big long speech I, I meant to give, which of course I'm not going to give. Uh, I have uh, to thank uh, a, a very uh, important set of people. I, I, I sometimes colloquially will call them my people, but it's not true. I, they're, I'm their person, not the other way around. Um, uh, to uh, Tanisha Madrid, uh, who worked for me uh, for years as a faculty assistant at Columbia Law School and whose uh, choreography and management and carefulness in organizing what has been going on today but who has gone home to pick up her children, uh, I, I, I must say uh, the most profound thank you. Tanisha has been rescuing me from administrative incompetence for more than all the time we have existed here. Uh, to, uh, to, to, to James and Sarah Park, to Alice Wang, uh, to uh, my assistant uh, at Columbia, Ben Mincer, uh, to my new and uh, treasured, uh, already treasured personal administrative support at SFLC, uh, Rose Regina Lawrence, uh, and to all the other people who have assisted the physical production of today, my deepest thanks. Um, to Uh, to Sunil, uh, well, what can I tell you except that it's nice to be proven not quite as big a mess up as you thought you were. Oh, Tanisha hasn't gone. Look at that. Uh, oh, there she is. Yes. Um, uh, to, uh, uh, to Sunil, I have uh, uh, nothing but the deepest of gratitude, but of course it isn't just Sunil. Uh, Nick Daly and James Delroy and Mark Jones and James Basile uh, and Clint Adams, who isn't among us today, and uh, to all of the people whom Sunil identified who have built Freedom Box. It works. Uh, all I can do is say that uh, one day the human race will be as grateful to them as I am. Um, to uh, uh, to, to uh, Daniel Ganuchev, who came into SFLC to run our technology barely a few months ago and who has uh, become a one-man streaming production facility uh, <laughs> and who has, uh, for those of you not actually in this room, made it possible for you to follow the video, the slides, the sound, and everything else over the net this afternoon. Uh, my deepest respects. <laughs> Uh, to the program committee who made all of this possible, to Terry uh, Illardi and David Marr and Eileen Evans who had to leave and uh, to uh, uh, Jim Wright uh, and to Rob Tiller and to those other luminaries of the profession, including once again my former CTO Clint Adams, who helped us put together today's program. Um, my great thanks. I hate uh, making my own courses. I have to because textbooks are so bad and case books are so awful and the way law school is taught is so damn broken. Uh, but things like this I don't have to write myself because they helped us do it and um, th that's the collaboration among lawyers that Keith was talking about. We, we make this program and we put it on. Uh, to Richard Fontana, um, uh, I, 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 what can I say? It's, it's great to see you once again. I, and, and, and you can work at Red Hat all you want. It'll never, uh, it, it'll never change that you're just GPL3 as far as I'm concerned. Um, uh, my, uh, my, 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 my speech was going to be about what's going to happen next. And what the hell? You don't need me to tell you anything about that, it's going to happen next, you'll see. Uh, I'm, going to, I, I'm going to just sort of put up some quick predictions so that when we're all together again next time you can laugh at me about them. I have said by the time we gather again here next year, and I do mean next, next year this time, uh, by the time we gather here next year we will be watching a truce in the patent. We will, beginning, we will begin to understand what the contours of peace are and we will be out there looking for it. What you saw today in Freedom Box leads me to predict what the free software movement is about to turn into. 
Richard Stallman and I have now spent more than a half a century of combined time and the majority of both our adult lives trying to make a space for freedom based around the technology that everyone can share. We have spent that half century, more than half a century, of our combined lives talking about why it is free as in freedom, not free as in beer. And I think of that now as phase one of the free software movement. What happened when Mr. Snowden began explaining how the world really works in the middle of 2013 is that a lot of young people around the planet began to pay attention. You've probably seen the public opinion numbers, at least they crossed by your retina. About two-thirds of the people who use the internet around the world have heard of Mr. Snowden and who know something about what he had to say. And society by society, if you go through the public opinion data and you sum over it, about of that two-thirds of the connected world, uh, north of one-third and south of 40% of those are people who want to do something and are trying to do something to increase their liberty or freedom or privacy or whatever they call it on the net. In other words, if you do the math in the roughest possible way, about one-fifth of the entire connected world is looking for Morpheus right now. I said that at the Free Software Foundation board meeting in honor of the 30th anniversary, and the only person in the room who didn't know what I was talking about was Richard Stallman, who did not know who Morpheus was, and that's as it should be. <laughs> but the rest of us know. So what I'm going to say about this is we are entering phase two of the free software movement in which we are going to be explaining that what this is is software that is free as in protects your freedom. We are talking to you now, to users throughout the world who are looking for something that will protect their freedom. We have said for most of our grown-up lives that it was impossible to protect freedom of people without freedom of software. Now, because of people like Sunil and his colleagues, like Nick, like James, like the others who will join Freedom Box at the hackathon tomorrow, we are actually preparing to deliver on that promise. This is software that is free as in protects your freedom. By the time we gather again here a year from now, that will have become clear to a larger part of the world. And once we have become as clear about that as we were about free as in freedom, we will have come to the maturity of the free software movement. And we will be doing what we have always meant to do with it, which is to use it to preserve the freedom of people in the 21st century we are making. At the end of the 20th century, in the year 2000 itself, my friend Larry Lessig, now a very successful candidate for president of the United States. He needs almost no money and he's not at all crazy, which is pretty good if you think about it. My friend Larry Lessig said back then, when the presidency was not even a gleam in his eye, that Richard Stallman was the inventor of the 21st century. And all I have to say about that is he better be right. Because if we wind up living in any 21st century other than the one Richard Stallman invented, we're screwed. I think that we're at least in hailing distance, thanks to our colleagues who write, make free software every day, I think we are at least in hailing distance of living in the 21st century Richard Stallman invented. And every time I think that, it makes it a little bit better to live where I live right now. That's why we're all still in it, I believe. My people, that is the people for whom I am their person, my students, when they bother to think about this at all, my colleagues, who, with a couple of sterling exceptions, who were here in the course of today, never think about this at all, under any circumstances. You, 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 you're really important about this. Some of you around here make a bloody fortune out of this. I'm thinking of you, Mr. Wright. Um, and, 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 and that's great, because we want everybody to make a bloody fortune out of all this. We really do. Um, we want to use that fortune. 
We don't want to take it away from anybody. We don't want to tax it. We don't want to demand dividends or royalties on it. We want to use that fortune because that fortune is the fortune which allows us to spread this technology and save freedom around the world. We're still political. We're plenty political. We think being political is the only possible alternative to just rolling over and letting it happen to us. We think what John said. Without the idea that we are pursuing freedom without compromises, we are going to get despotism without compromises. And that's not acceptable in the human race. I live in the process of helping people grow up to make justice. That's what I do in my day job in this and other rooms like this. And we can't make justice, we can't make justice if we're not making free software. Thanks for coming. It's a privilege to see you. It's wonderful to know that you care enough to come. We will do this again one year from now. We will send an invitation. We will make a program. We will invent a bunch of things. We will have magicians. And their magic will be good. And we will need you more than we need anything else in the world. To our panelists, to Shinkuruku and Nathan Betson and to Neil McGovern, and to everybody who traveled long to help us educate people, to our clients, not to our adversaries. Thanks so much. See you soon. Thank Good night. you.